Walking in God. Welcome to Walking in God, each and every one of you, in this wonderful year of 2018. This year that God is going to use us so powerfully. Are you ready? Are you ready? I hope so. I'm ready. We're teaching about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, how to be used in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. How do I, uh, how can I minister in word of knowledge? How can I minister in the prophetic gifts? Just stay tuned in and we'll begin to tell you. This whole season is going to be on the Holy Spirit. But I'd like to introduce, first of all, Robert. Hello, God bless you. Thank you for having us. Carol. Thank you for joining us. Dr. Carol Branham and then our beautiful Pat, our songbird. Our pleasure to be with you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Great. Well, the last program we had, we were talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. How, who is the Holy Spirit? And why do I need him? You need him in order for God to use you. Because if you want to be used of God, then you definitely need the gifts of the Holy Spirit functioning in your life. I want to tell you this, uh, precious brothers and sisters. When you receive Jesus Christ in your heart, of course you have the Holy Spirit because you cannot separate Trinity. Amen. But we're talking about the power of, the, of God, the Holy Spirit, trust forth in your life, yielding to him, allowing him to use you, submitting, submitting to God, the Holy Spirit. That's very, very Amen. important. Yes. Yes. And um, this year, the Lord gave me a vision a couple of, about three or four shows ago as a ball coming down from heaven and it, as it exploded, that ball exploded. It was a crystal ball, beautiful gold and all different colors yes, and out came the presence of the anointing and it just rusted upon everyone. And that's what we're happening. The Lord was telling me this is happening in 2018. Amen. Hallelujah. Our precious Amen. brothers and sisters, I want you to know that God is going to use you as long as you've cried out for God to use you. He's listening to you. He's not going to take your prayer and toss it aside. What do you say to that, Carol? Yes, he's going to fulfill promises that you may have forgotten, but nothing is forgotten with him. And what he intends to do in your life, he will begin to do. Amen. Amen. Pat, what happens when you ask God to use you? Well, he, he doesn't come up with a, short, a shortage list. He comes up with many things, but it helps our growth and it helps him to be able to use us for the advancement of his kingdom. And that's very Amen. important. Come Amen. On, that's that's what it's all about. It's all How about, about you, Robert? You've had such experiences with the Holy Spirit. Most of all, your deliverance from heroin. Oh, amen. And, and I got to tell you that when that time, when he called me, you know, the Lord went to me and found me in a prison cell, okay? Word oh of God, God says that I didn't choose him, he chose me. But the day I began walking with them and following them, you know, that was 27 glorious years ago, going on 28 now. And I told them, Lord, I want the years to go on fast and, and I'd be steadfast in you so the people would know that you are for real. And we're talking about 20 years ago now. And here I am. By his grace, Praise I stand God. here to tell you, hey, God is good, as we say. You know, Amen. and as you said that, Robert, I know there's many parents, wives, and children that have their father or perhaps even their mother, their children, their husband in prison. And they're praying for their, their loved ones in prison. But I want to tell you, sometimes that's the best place for them to be in. Yes. Robert, when he yes. was in prison, is when the Holy Spirit came to him. So we're going to pray right now for yeah. all of our relatives yeah. and loved ones that are in prison. Mm. Father, in the mighty name of oh, Jesus, Mashita, we Mashita, lift up Mashita, every Mashita, one of our relatives, Mashita. all of those Mashita. yell out their names right now that are in prison, Father. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit through a vessel yes. or even yes, just Lord. a vision. Praise we claim Jesus. each of them Hallelujah. for the Holy Spirit. We claim each yes. of them by the Holy Spirit for the Holy Spirit, for the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 I believe that Praise because you, my son yes. got touched in prison. I want Praise to tell God. you, I felt so bad that he was in prison, but it was the best thing that ever happened to yes. him. Amen. Same thing with Robert. Amen. Yes. <clears throat> and... We pray that these precious ones, our relatives, will accept the Lord, that they will. Amen. Lord, yes. we right now, in, in the mighty name of Jesus, we claim that our relatives yes. will accept you, Jesus, while they're presented with you. In Jesus' mighty name, Hallelujah. Amen. amen. We've been talking about God, the Holy Spirit, and his gifts, and we 
So we have to know the person of God, the Holy Spirit, before we can be used by him. We have to be intimate with him. A marriage becomes powerful when the husband and the wife are very intimate with each other. If there is no intimacy, the marriage usually falls apart. But there has to be great and tremendous yearning for each other, great and tremendous um, unity, great and tremendous yielding one to another, wanting to make the other happy. It's, it's such a wonderful example that God gave us. He likened the body of Christ as his bride and the brides that are to be, and the husbands as Jesus or the Holy Spirit. And so we are the bride of Christ, and he is our leader. He is our husband. I love that. Right. And he's a husband that never, ever fails, let me Amen. tell you. Well, Robert, would you read again the gifts of the Spirit? Or, or the, not the gifts, but now we're reading. First of all, last week you read the wonderful um, fruits of the Spirit. So fr actually, fruits of the Spirit are more important than the gifts. And unless you're operating in the fruits, you'll never have the gifts. Do you hear what I said? A lot of people want the gifts. They want to be used. I want prophecy. I want the gift of healing. But they don't want to know to have that intimacy with the Holy Spirit. You can't be used by God unless you're yearning. You're yearning for the gifts of the Holy Spirit and for the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Then the Holy Spirit comes within you with his fire and he ignites you to go forth. I'm telling you, it's the most wonderful walk Amen. that could ever be. Nice. So now, Robert, really quick, read us the fruits first. It's Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Against such there is no law. And you can hear as he reads those fruits of the Spirit, we see the presence of Christ, the goodness Amen. of Christ. They're all extremely important. Every single one of those gifts are extremely important because they should be flowing from you even before you even think of operating in the mm. gifts. Uh, so would you read us the gifts now, Robert? Uh, I just have the fruit of the Spirit, uh, Joanne. It's in the same chapter, honey. Anyway, while he's looking that up, I'm going to ask Pat to read a scripture that I have here. Um, Pat, would you read um, John 16, 8 to 11? Yes, John 16, 8 to 11. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. That's, would you read it again? That's such a powerful scripture. Yes, I will. When this Jesus has come. When Jesus has come. Mm -hmm, go ahead. He will reprove the world of sin. In other words, he'll convict them of sin. Go and ahead. of righteousness and of judgment. What is conviction? It's when you do something wrong and you hear that small voice of God say, uh-uh, you shouldn't have said that, you shouldn't have done that. Then you go before the Lord and ask forgiveness. That's the Holy Spirit that reproves the world of sin. So can you think of some of the gifts, Robert, right offhand of the Spirit? Uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit may be um, uh, um, the, the word of knowledge, okay, the what, word of preaching. Yeah, the, word, the preaching, the word of knowledge, which is when you, you hear something about somebody. I mean, by the Lord, you hear something, you're praying for somebody, and he tells you this one has needs healing of the past, etc., etc. And then there's the gifts of healing, inner healing, healing. and healing of the physical body. Um, also... Word, you know, word of knowledge is very important. That's what we talked about. Preaching is very important. Yes. And um, the gift Preach. of tongues is very important. That's a gift also. Speaking the language of the Holy Spirit. Can you think of any more gifts, Carol? Prophecy is a tremendously oh, that's the one. Yes. That's the one I was changing. Gift. Yeah. Amen. Usually, let me tell you something. Usually the prophetic word goes hand in hand with the word of wisdom or the word of knowledge. Um, if you go to a healing service such as, let's say, Benny Hinn or anyone that you know that operates in the healing ministry, I know our ministry does, and say, for instance, the minister calls out, the Lord is touching somebody in the right ear. We do it right here on the program. That's a word of knowledge. 
and then that person, and then sometimes say in the, the front row, in the back row, if it's, if it's in an auditorium, if it's over the air, air, I'll probably would just call it out, or somebody on the team here will just call it out. God shows us what he's healing. The last program, um, what did he heal on the last program? Do you remember, Robert? Uh, it was something to do with insecure, insecure. Yeah, uh, you, the Lord gave him the word of insecurity. The Lord, the, oh, it was a tremendous inferiority. deliverance. Yeah. Deliverance of fear, deliverance of um, uh, homosexuality, deliverance of, of any of those things. It was a tremendous uh, uh, presence of the deliverance anointing. See, there's different anointings. So let's go on to hear more about the Holy Spirit here. You really want to know about the Holy Spirit. It's very important that you become so intimate with him. And Pastor Benny Hinn wrote the book, Good Morning, Holy Spirit. Yes. And I love that title yes. because we wake up knowing the Holy Spirit, talking to the Holy Spirit. And that begins your intimacy for the day. It's mm, very, amen. very good. Yes. Um, John 16, 14. Carol. John 16, 14. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. In other words, the gift of visions. He shall glorify me. The Holy Spirit always glorifies Jesus. You have to know that. Always. And for he shall receive of mine. There could be something he says to you and so forth. And he shall show it unto you. Sometimes when I'm praying or calling out word of knowledge, I'll have a vision of a foot. I'll have a vision of a stomach. And Robert, you get many visions, don't you? Share some of those with us. Yes, I do. Thank God. Uh, for example, he will be praying. All of a sudden, we see like a, I see like a chair up in the air. Then the scripture follows it, that we're sitting with him in high places. You know, things like that. He'll show me an arm uh, 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 had been broken, and he's, tr he's healing that. So there's many things that God will show you. As you're in prayer, especially in praise and worship, when you're praising and worship yes, the Lord, that's so powerful. very powerful. Very you powerful. You know, because he says, I abide in the praises of my people. So that's when you, you know, ask him, pray. You know, that's when uh, your healing comes. That's when that deliverance can come. So <clears throat> the gift of vision is very, 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 uh, very powerful. Because you can share with the people, and the people, you know, as you tell them what you see, they understand, right. they understand. I might not understand, but they understand what words, I'm saying. He may give him, the Lord may give him a vision that he doesn't understand. Maybe it's a wife and a husband walking together towards a tree. And he may call that out, and he doesn't understand what it means. But it may mean the healing of a marriage, Amen. of a separation. Yes. Somebody may understand what it means yes. through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's so wonderful the way the Holy Spirit uses everyone. Yes, amen. That's yes. why you need to have unity in the body of Christ. That's right. Amen. Um, Romans 5.5, 5, Robert. Uh, Romans 5.5. 5. Now, Romans 5.5 5 tells us that um, it says, And hope make it not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So <clears throat> that's another gift. And love is a love. fruit. Amen. And you know something? I'm going to tell you. I had an alcoholic husband all, my, all of our marriage, 30, 40 years. And he was a very a mean alcoholic. He never physically abused me, but verbally abused me. And um, I was praying one time, so before Jesus, so earnestly to just do something do something with him. Do something with him. And the Lord says, no, I'm going to do something with you. I'm going to mm. give you the ability that every time you look at your husband, you see him as I see him. Praise and I see him as a man that's in great uh, pain that he drinks. Mm. And if you could see him that way, you would have mercy. And do you know, I went home that very day my husband came home, I had such great mercy for him, and I saw him no longer as this man that ramped and raved at me, Jesus. but a man who was in tremendous pain. Uh, Mother Teresa used to say, the alcoholic does, um, does suffering for my sins. Maybe you don't understand suffering for somebody else. Um, for instance, if I have the flu, I'm going to offer that pain up yes. and unite it with yeah. Jesus and maybe offer it for someone who's not Amen. saved, right. you know, That's for right. my, my cousin who needs to know the Lord, etc. 
It is so wonderful yeah. to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. It brings heaven down to earth. And we walk just as Jesus has. To walk in the supernatural, I mean, it's a most tremendous gift. Mm -hmm. I just pray all of you want to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, let's see. Pat, did you read 16, 8 to 11? No. Would you read that, please? Oh, I did. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I did. You did read that. Yeah. Okay. Carol, would you read 16, 13? John 16, 13. John 16, 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth. That's the Holy Spirit. Is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. You know, I had a girlfriend that was in my ministry, and she was a single woman raising two boys who were teenagers and constantly getting in trouble. Hmm. And she, t she claimed that scripture. So when the boys would tell her something, oh, we were home right after school, she would know when they were lying. She claimed that scripture, and she knew every time that her boys were telling her something just to get themselves out of trouble. But she needed to know the truth so she could discipline them. And then it says uh, there, um, you know, then he'll show you. And the Lord did show her exactly many times what the boys did. Same with my children. I'll tell you, it's the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit moving in your life is a protection, not only for yourself, but for your family. It's so very powerful. Yes. Pat, would you read 1 Corinthians 2, 14? Yes, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. You cannot enter into the gifts of the Spirit unless you have the power of the Holy Spirit, unless you've given your life to Jesus Christ and invite the Holy Spirit. Start walking in the supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit. Start walking in Jesus. That's very, very important. Would you read that again? Maybe I'll read it, Pat. Okay. But the natural man receiveth not the things of God. The man who's walking in the natural life, maybe your neighbor next door goes to church on Sunday and that's it. But you're not that man if you receive the Lord. Amen. Every day is a day that you're walking with Jesus. Hallelujah. And not the things of the Spirit of God. He'll never know the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. Maybe you know people, maybe even in your own family. My yes. husband used to make fun of the gifts of the Spirit. He used to tell me, Jesus was my crutch. And I said, yeah, he is my crutch, you know. So maybe you've had experiences like that. Um. And he won't know them because they're spiritually discerned. The gifts of the Holy Spirit is walking with your eyes as the Holy Spirit sees, with your ears as the Holy Spirit sees. Many times you're quickened to a need of somebody by the tone of their voice, yes. by the, 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 the look in their eyes. You know they're troubled. And right away the Holy Spirit will say, what's, what, what's wrong with them? And then I say to those people, uh, if they're not in the ministry, of course, I say, is there something I can help you with? May I pray for you? Do you have a need? And oh, and then as you're praying, the prayer will come out with the need of that person. See, everything, every gift of healing, every miraculous gift is, is to bring people to Jesus, Amen. not to have yourself puffed up. That's it's right. never to, you're yeah. nothing. That's the only way God can use you when you know you're nothing. You're absolute nothing. Yes. And that you're, you're calling out to God. And that's the way to be, I'm nothing but you're calling out to God. And then, as you're calling out to God, he gives you the supernatural gifts, the eyes that you can see with his eyes and hear with his ears, the tone in their voice, the look on their face. It's very, very important. And it'll just brighten up like a light will shine on it. Yes. Next door neighbor, who's next, maybe sitting next to you, will never see that as you see it. Their, look, their face light up or their ears. Or that, because there's different ways that you will learn for the Holy Spirit to teach you how to see things. Um, uh, I'll tell you, it's so important. We have so many wonderful gifts here. Um, Carol, can you read Acts 2.3? Acts 2, three. Acts 2 three. 
And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. That's the apostles as they were in, our, in the upper room. Now here they were so frightened. Peter even denied Jesus he was so frightened that they were going to get uh, put on a cross like Jesus and beaten like Jesus if they were revealed. So they all huddled in the, in the upper room so, ama so afraid. And then all of a sudden, a mighty rushing wind came in, and it was the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then all of a sudden, they started speaking in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And as they did that, but you know, that did not come until they were all of one accord. I imagine they said to Peter, Peter, you denied Jesus. What about that? You're supposed to be so spiritual. Somebody else say, will say, well, you didn't walk with Jesus. You hid. You didn't help him. I imagine that went on in the upper room. And then as that ceased, and they started to concentrate on God, as they started to concentrate on God, they became of one accord. And that's when the Holy Spirit fell upon them. Hallelujah. Um, Amen. So praise God about that. Jesus. Carol, you just, you just um, read a scripture. Would you read Galatians 4, 6? Galatians 4, 6. Well, I'll just call it out. I and have it. <laughs> okay, would you Galatians read Galatians 4, 6. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Yes, precious brothers and sisters. When I first cry, was crying in tongues, my father, my earthly father, had just died of maybe a month prior to that. And I was praying and crying out to God, the Holy Spirit. And I was calling Abba, Abba, Abba. And I did not know that I was calling out to God, the Holy Spirit, and, and my Heavenly Father. Because the words I was saying in tongues was Abba, Abba, Abba. I didn't know what it meant, but it meant Father. Well, precious ones, right now we're going to have, we're going to close with this wonderful song. These are the days of Elijah. We're going to walk as Elijah walked, Amen. moving in the gifts of the Amen. Spirit. Hallelujah. And telling people about Jesus, battling Satan. These are all the things that God has called us to do. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. These are the days of Elijah. Yes, they are. I'll you with the in the word of the Lord. He's going to anoint you. And these are the days of your servant Moses. Righteous is being stored. Hallelujah. And though these are the days of Spirit. great trials, the Holy Spirit. of famine, darkness, and sorrow. Somebody's been getting intense migraine headaches. God is touching that right now. Like the sun, it's feeling a heat in your mind, Robert. The Lord's giving discernment to the people. He's giving that discernment to be able to know which way you're going as you keep and walk in the power of the Spirit. Totally, you're going to be directed by God, the Holy God's Spirit. God's giving direction to you, those who need direction. Hallelujah. I see toes that are crippled from arthritis. Right now, God the Holy Spirit is loosening those toes. Move your toes in Jesus' name. Move those toes. I bind that arthritis. Let's go now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit of God, flood the homes. Flood the people. Come down like a mighty, like a mighty rainfall upon the people. Pour yourself into the people. Pour yourself into the people. Have, teach them how to yield to you, O oh Holy Spirit. Through the days of the harvest, God's going to use you to bring people to Jesus Christ. Robert? Yes. Yes. God's anointing somebody who especially wanted to evangelize. You feel a fire in your lips. You're going to preach the word of God, and it's going to be with fire in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just raise your hands and yield to the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Invite him into your home. Invite him into your heart. Holy Spirit, come. Come. I want to be in this, these last days, Father God. 
Hallelujah. Somebody injured your left arm in an accident. And you've been going to therapy, you've been doing all kinds of things, but right now, God is going to heal you. Move it. Move up and down on that right arm. Move up and down. Pain is to go. You have mobility here. Thank Praise you, Jesus. Robert? Praise you, Lord. The Lord restoring in families the Praise absence God. of the Father. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He's restoring that right now. And the name of, I could see the Father crying out. Praise you, Jesus. Because the Father has been absent in the home is how everybody got to where they're at now. But it's got nothing to do with you. It's got to do with the hurts that you've been through. But God is healing that today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In other words, precious ones, your hurts are going to be healed and the Father's going to return. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank yes, you, Jesus. Lord. And we're going to close this session with these are the days of Elijah. And as, Kath, as a Pat sings that, let's raise our hands and ask the Spirit of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, to come upon us as it did Elijah, Amen. that we may walk Amen. in the Spirit, we may walk Jesus. in the holy anointing of God, the Holy Spirit, that your home may be a sanctuary for the angels of God and the Holy Spirit of God. God bless you. Pat. Behold, he comes. He's coming on the clouds. And he's going to use you. Shining like the sun. Hallelujah. At the trumpet call. Well, lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee. Out of science hills. Salvation Hallelujah. Comes. Praise you, Jesus. Behold, he comes. Riding on the clouds. Shining like the sun. At the trumpet call.